Check one, two. What's up? All right, what's good, y'all? It's your boy Riz, a.k.a. RSD, represent the great 88 KZSC Santa Cruz. And right now, we're here in Santa Cruz, and I'm here with the one and only Lil Sheik. How you doing today, bro? I'm doing good. What's up with Santa Cruz? You know, I'm out here with it. We ganging. Tap in. All right, so you're currently on tour right now with your childhood friends, SOBRBE, with the 2017 YWN Summer Tour. How has that experience been? Yeah, that should been crazy. Hello, t vibes all the bitches, everything. Show's going crazy. That shit just been crazy, though. I ain't gonna lie. That shit clean, bro. I like that shit, though. Hell yeah. All right, I'm gonna use a little G's word. Which city has been the most yanking? Man, it's crazy. They all been yanking, though. Like, I couldn't even. I really say Seattle was really turned as fuck, though. Sack was cool yesterday, though. All that shit was lit, but I say Seattle. Seattle was the best one. Do you think it was a relief to see how much love and support you received from your fans on your end? For sure, that was, that was good, though, just to see that everybody really fucking with me now. From, from when I started, you know, just to see the improvement level ups, that was cool. I know uh, at a recent venue, I believe you brought up a family member up on stage. Can you talk about being far away from home and your family and being one with your other family or your music brothers? Yeah, you know, I be on the road a lot, though, so I be missing my family and shit. My little sister came through, so I brought her up on the stage. She always wanted me to bring her on the stage. I finally brought her up, let her turn it up. So that was cool. How much sleep do you get on tour, especially this one? Man, to be honest, we be up all night, partying all night, smoking, doing everything. I barely sleep on tour, you know, probably like five hours a day, though. For sure. Now, where do you reside? Where were you born? And how old are you now? I was born up in Berkeley, though, but I'm from Richmond, and I'm 16. Right now, I'm finna be 17, though, in a couple days. Yeah. Well, happy early birthday, man. Um, besides making music, what else are you doing with your life? That's, that's what I do. I just make music. That's my career. That's all I do, really, right now. Yeah, yeah. Go to school and shit. What made you start making music? To be honest, really, I started making music just on some cat and all shit. Me and Tutu just had went to the studio. I made my first song in the classroom, really. We had went to the studio and just did that shit, and that shit was cool. Niggas was fucking with it. So then I just started making more music. Then me and T.O. did something, and then everybody just fucked with me, so I just kept this shit lit. Started making more music. How did that first song sound like? Yeah, that shit was lit. That shit was clean. They was fucking with it. It just It's a little song I got called Tear It Up on, uh, on YouTube. You can look it up. So what music did you listen to growing up? Were you around um, your parents or guardians a lot, listening to a lot uh, any old school music as sampled uh, in your project, Stuck in These Streets? I, I listened to that uh, that Candy beat I sampled. I listened, I, I listened to that growing up, you know, playing GTA and shit, all of that. But really growing up, I listened to it. Smacker, like niggas from my hood. What have you learned so far since you started making music at a young age? Everybody be hating, that's what it is. Everybody hating. Everybody don't want to see you get no cheese. They just want to see niggas in the streets killing each other and shit. How did you come up with your name, Lil Sheik? I got that from my pops. That was my pops' name. They just pass it down. When you listen uh, to beats, what is the first thing you listen to? I got I, I rap on any type of beat. Like you see that sidewalk beat, that was a different beat I didn't fuck with at first and I ended up getting on it anyway. I just whatever sound good, I fuck with it though, really. I'm li I'm looking for bass, everything, samples, all that. I fuck with all type of shit. You tweeted the other day that quote, you made like forty five songs this week, the gang been working. How long does it take uh to make, write and produce your music? I say top like an hour. I can make a song in an hour. Easy. Like that shit don't be nothing. Write a song, hop on a beat. Pull up the beat in the lab and write the whole song right there in like an hour. Mm -hmm. But it'd be times where shit, you know, take two hours, three hours really to just get that shit right. And also you tweeted that you be having uh, long ass studio st sessions and good sessions in uh, Atlanta the other day, I believe. Can you talk about those experiences working late night in the studio and also working in Atlanta? Man, working in Atlanta, that shit was cool. That shit was epic. For sure, we was working, working on all type of new projects that I got coming out. Yeah, me and T.O. got a project coming out soon, too. We working on that. And actually, I got a video coming soon, though. My nigga Promoter J right here. Yeah, that's coming out real soon. Hey, T.O. is cool. I fuck with it. And then the first time I also heard about you was a song, Ballin'. How was that experiencing filming it with one of my homies, uh, Sammy Biscara? Oh, yeah, that shit was epic, though, for sure. That was real. You know, Sammy was doing his thing. He brought a whole crew with him. He taking pictures. It's just a lot of cash shit. Guns all in the video is in the trap with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shit was clean. I really, I really grew up playing football. I used to play sports a lot. Then I really just 
start rapping and shit, you know, all of that. Really got in the streets and shit when I moved to Vallejo. So that balling, that, that was just letting niggas know we really balling out here. How are you able to get or to be under Big Money Entertainment? Big Money, that's a, that's a group we made in middle school, like eighth grade. And then I just took that and ran with it and made my little, that's like my own little label I got like for myself, yeah. One of the end of your music videos, you mentioned uh, OTB the gang. What is OTB? Only the brothers, them. Big Money, that's my group. And OTB, that's my nigga real group. And we locked in, so we clicked up. That's OTB, so it's Big Money OTB. All right, I noticed that you have a certain clothing style, like you wore all red in your fake music video, an all black, all blue tracksuit in the Canon music video, and a Coke white hoodie in the Stash Bot 2 music video. Where do you shop at? Man, I shop anywhere. You know, I be saucing wherever. See, custom, I had the custom hoodie on the Stash Bot 2, especially for the video, you know, fucking around. I, but I'm everywhere, you know, I shop anywhere, anywhere that got something clean. What is the ideal Lil Chic fit? I really just, I just make shit match, shit gotta match right now, I'm not even dressed, to be honest, this is just my clothes I wear to the meet and greet, I'ma change when I get to the venue and shit. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is what I got on right now, they're all black, I'm just thugging it right now. All right, there's been a lot of uh, leaking of songs lately, uh, recently, what is your take on uh, leakage of songs. Man, that shit crazy. Motherfuckers gotta stop doing that. That's why you just can't send your shit to people, though. That's why I don't even send my shit out. Because any, I know anything I drop or anything get leaked out of mine, I'm gonna be hot. So I don't even send my shit out. I should keep my shit with the gang. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like people of color or you artists are safe in the Bay Area? I know you tweeted back in May that, quote, if I put it in my song, then I live it, dog. End quote. Why do you think it's so important to tell your story? Hey, cause I feel like people need to hear my shit. People need to hear what we do, what we go through every day. People need to hear that shit, and that's what they fuck with. I, I want people to hear my lifestyle, what I do every day, what we go through. So that's why I put that shit in my music. Did you ever think you were gonna go outside of California and be on tour with uh, SOB, RBE? And did you ever think that there's gonna be uh, Lil Chic type beats on YouTube? Man, to be honest, I really didn't, though, because I really didn't take this shit that serious, though. Like, I, I didn't used to take that shit that serious till I noticed everybody really fuck with me. Like, I could really go somewhere with this shit, then I really start taking this shit serious. That shit crazy, though. All right, now, if you would like to, um, can you specifically describe a moment that helped make you become who you are today? Uh, many are aware that Big Money Tutu, a.k.a. Lil Tutu, R.I.P. him, was literally by your side your whole life. What about um, those in jail? Do you feel like those people who are gone or locked up feel like that motivates you to become who you are, like just in music, uh, rapping? Sure. That shit motivated me to go hard, man. I lost my little brother in the streets. I was right there, you know, so that shit make me go harder. Really do this shit, because we was pushing this shit together for real. But he just is more slacking in, into the street shit, wasn't trying to be in a lab. I was on my lab shit, so I'm just keeping our mission going, you know? You gotta really take this shit serious. Can you... Now talk about uh, your relationship uh, with the late Lil Tutu. Man, I was just my dog. I was with him every day. It's my brother. We just grew up together. Sixth grade. We've been fucking with him every since. So. Thanks for asking those questions. And the Bay Area is a melting pot filled with musicians that are blowing up the music industry from the past to the present. You are currently a part of this melting pot in the Bay Area. What makes Bay Area music so different than other cities or just around the world? Bay Area shit, it's just a different type of flow, a different type of turn than what they talk about in their music. That should be different, you know? And Detroit shit, like Detroit got their own little different type of style too. They shit clean. See, I fuck with my band gang niggas, they got their own little style. All of that, T Grizzly got his own little style. And the Bay got their own little style, you know? We started up our own little wave too, with this cash shit, talking all that shit now. You know, T.O. singing on the hooks now, everybody doing that shit, we starting up waves. All right now, so you've been on tour for a minute now. What do you do right, right before you perform? Do you have like a little uh, like pregame, a little routine you have? Now, I ain't gonna lie, dude. I smoke cookie. That's why I get loaded in the clouds before I get on the stage, so I don't even got to think about that shit. Like, not even, I be so high, I don't, it's like, I don't be, it don't, it don't bother me that it's a thousand people in front of me. I be so high. That's why I got to get loaded before I go on the stage. The first time I saw you perform was at the All-Star Show at the Boys and Girls Club in December 2016. Mm. And I think, I personally think your best performance was at the three SF shows with SOB. Do you remember your first performance, and what do you think is the best or most memorable performance you've had so far? I say I say the SF shows too, though. That was them was the good ones. That's when I really just became overcame my stage fright because I used to be I used to be shy on the stage a little bit. I ain't gonna lie, and I just when I just overcame that shit, 
and I had my brother right there, so you know, that was one of the best memories I for sure got right now. The first ever performance was like my first performance at a party. It was cracking though. So like everybody was just fucking with it. I didn't even have to say no words. Everybody saying all the words, so it was like, you know, that shit was good. All right, now what's the favorite song you've made and why? Man, I got a lot of favorite songs that I really made, but I say Ride, my favorite song, because I feel like that's one of my deepest songs that I really made. You tweeted, quote, 2K got some weak music, end quote. If you had the opportunity to put five songs of yours or your homies on the game, which song would you have on 2K or Madden? Man, Wallin' for sure got to be on 2K. That's one of them for sure. I say we need Ruthless on there too, lane changing. Sidewalk need to be on there. We need Streets out on there. They ain't even out yet. But when that come, we gonna for sure need that on there. And we need Knockdown for sure. And if you were to make a super song with any artist dead or alive, who would you feature? Dead or alive? I really, I like a lot of Biggie Smalls music. I, I would have made some shit with Biggie Smalls for sure. That's about it for real. You're only on the song In The Field on T.O.'s album. How come you didn't have a song on the album like rapping? I really don't know because he, we ain't even was we wasn't working around that time. And I just came to the lab and he just wanted me to just talk some shit on the track, you know, like I be doing on my shit. So I just did a little intro for him on both of them little verses like that. I know you've been tweeting lately. Do you and Teal have a project on the way personally? You, uh, you tweeted numerous amount of times that you're working on a duo tape, I believe. Yeah, we got a uh, we got a new tape we was working on. We we had we been working on this tape for a minute, then Tutu passed, so we named it Ballin' Like Tutu. We ain't never had no name for it. We were just working on it, and we named it that. So that's going to be coming real soon, too. We just got to really put some work into it, make sure that shit right. Yeah, what improvements can you make going forward? Shit, it's always room for improvements. I'm, we got to do better, do more numbers, all type of shit. Just level ups. It's always room for level ups. Never down. And then what advice can you give to other artists that, I guess, make it out the struggle or make it out their respective city and start making music? To stay on that shit. You got to keep con consistently dropping. Just stay on that shit. Stay on these niggas next. That's the way niggas going to have no choice but to fuck with you. The more you drop, the more they just going to have to fuck with you. They ain't got no choice. And then lastly, where can people find you on social media? So you can find me on, on social media, on Instagram, one nine little chic or on Twitter, 1-9-Lil-Sheep. And then, uh, while we're at it, anyone you want to give a shout-out to? Shout-out to the gang. Shout-out to the whole gang. Everybody you knows. Shout-out Big Money, OTB. Shout-out my, my niggas from the hood. Shout-out Kari B, Marky D. Shout-out the whole Belly B. Shout-out the gang. And y'all really need to tune in to my cutty Lil Nooney, though. He from the rich. He coming up, for sure. Shout out to my nigga Drip too, he working, go slap that down. Make sure to turn on your notifications and follow Lil Sheik all on social media and be on the lookout everywhere. But in the meantime, slap that stuck in the streets. He'll be dropping a new tape soon with Young T.O. Promoter J will be promoting more stuff for Lil Sheik. Big money, everything. Lil Sheik, thank you so much. It's good. Shout out Santa Cruz, I fucks with it. Right on. We out.